Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Creativity is like a spark that ignites the flame of innovation. In the last lecture, we have basically looked at the effect of uh, the initial pressure and the initial temperature on the running velocity. And uh, we have seen that uh, the pressure particularly for certain mixtures or certain range of uh, fuel air system decreases the laminar burning velocity, but that is not true for all the range and whereas, the temperature enhances the burning velocity and we have looked at uh, semi empirical relationship uh, to uh, basically solve a problem and also how we can handle the semi empirical relationship uh, taking care of the effect of uh, inlet uh, temperature and uh, pressure and also the dilution effect was embedded in that uh, semi empirical relationship. Today, uh, we will be looking at the effect of inert additives or the dilution you can say on the laminar burning velocity and here I have plotted uh, the laminar burning velocity versus the percentage of fuel in mixtures. If you look at uh, this arrow indicates the with the increasing of the uh, inert content. Inert content means it will be any gas which will be act like uh, for example, nitrogen, helium, argon. So, I can look at that inert gas. This is maybe nitrogen, helium, argon or any other gases a kind of thing. If you look at inert, then what is happening? This uh, laminar burning velocity let us say this inert is 0 like this is the thing this is having a very high peak temperature here and uh, sorry peak uh, laminar burning velocity here and it reduces uh, to the this is reach side right this is the lean side mixtures and it uh, of course decreases both the lean and the reach side. But when you increase uh, this inert content what do you find? that uh, there is a reduction in the burning velocity because the burning velocity has decreases right. And uh, beside this if you look at so let us say this is the peak value here and when you uh, go for uh, you know inert addition then uh, then what will happen it will be here. Then when it will be peak values uh, of the burning velocity is changing because uh, let us say this is at this fuel layer you know ratio mixture ratio and whereas here it is here. So, this is changing that means it is going towards more leaner side that is the one observation you can make. And um, another important things which we will be discussing later on this is basically known as the flammability limit like uh, this is known as RFL reach flammability limit. And this you can say basically uh, this is lean flammability limit right. And this is being narrowed down like we see within this range the uh, flame having certain finite burning velocity that means it is flammable, but beyond this it is not flammable right it was a meaning. That means the flammability limit being narrowed down. <coughs> And uh, as I told there is a shifting of uh, peak SL, SL uh, maximum right. So, this is being shifted towards the lean side and uh, why there is a shift in uh, laminar burning velocity peak because what happened with the addition of inert gases the ratio of thermal conductivity and specific heat of the mixture resulting in change in burning velocity. So, we have seen that conductivity plays a very important role and so also the specific heat. And specific heat uh, if you look at uh, if it is uh, being uh, 
enhance then what will happen the uh, basically uh, the temperature will be decreased for the same heat release rate right so if the uh, temperature will decrease naturally the reaction rate will be decreasing and if decreases the burning velocity will uh, decrease right <coughs> and similarly the thermal conductivity so uh, let us look at uh, three diluents we are going for methane air mixtures right uh, one is nitrogen other is argon other is helium right so uh, different of course here what we are doing in the upper one it is a same diluent let us say if I take nitrogen it will be one nitrogen I am goes on increasing but here what is being done the uh, the percentage will be same but the um, diluent will be different in this case nitrogen argon helium so if you can look at that uh, the observation that burning velocity uh, with the helium addition is uh, much higher than the argon and uh, the burning velocity for the argon is also uh, much higher than the nitrogen that is the observation you can make uh, and of course there is a broadening of the uh, flammability limit particularly for helium. Uh, like if I consider this is the flammability limit right and uh, that means uh, when you go from helium to nitrogen generally it narrows down the uh, range of the flammability limit that is another thing. So question is why it is so because what is happening the thermal diffusivity of helium right uh, is much larger than the argon right we have already seen this thing like SL is uh, basically uh, root over 32 by 2 uh, 32 by 9 um, alpha this is your thermal divisible rho uh, nu plus 1 f this is we have already seen this formula right. So, uh, this is higher right and beside this uh, what you can see that uh, rho uh, rho u is uh, basically inversely proportional to molecular weight is not it rho u is proportional sorry rho u is proportional to molecular weight by the ga ideal gas law right as p is equal to rho r u by m w t right. So, rho is proportional to molecular. So, therefore, S l if you look at S l is proportional to alpha right and molecular weight right and of course, this will be root right root will be there. So, uh, if you look at that way that uh, molecular weight of the helium is much lower if it is lower then therefore there will be increase in the uh, laminar burning velocity as compared to the argon and similarly the thermal diffusivity is higher so therefore also it will be having effect uh, but when you uh, look at the argon and nitrogen you will find that it is have almost same thermal diffusivity that means it is not really changing by that. Of course, uh, uh, if you look at the argon uh, will be having higher molecular weight uh, as compared to the nitrogen right is not it. So, um, but here what is happening the C p the argon being a monoatomic gas the C p value will be very low right. For example, if I take uh, at 300 Kelvin C p of argon will be something 0 0.52 kilo joule per kg Kelvin and C p of nitrogen will be 
1.02 kilojoule per kelvin right at 300 kelvin but of course uh, the argon being monoatomic gas it won't be really uh, changing much with the temperature but however nitrogen it will be changing with temperature it will be increasing with the and the temperature increases so uh, therefore what will happen the cp of nitrogen being higher then what will happen to the um, uh, temperature the burn, uh, the uh, flame temperature if you look at the cp uh, basically uh, if you look at the q q is equal to delta sc by m is nothing but your cp uh, by tf minus tu for the same heat what happened the cp is higher so what will happen if the same heat release or the same heat uh, release per unit mass right what will happen the cp will be higher that means the tf if cp is increases then tf will reduce for the same same q right so therefore the temperature will be uh, in case of uh, nitrogen when you add will be decreasing and this is having much higher effect why because it is e power to the uh, the reaction rate goes f e power to the r u t so therefore this will be affecting much the reaction rate as a result that burning velocity will be reduced drastically right this is the argument what i am trying to give so therefore uh, argon uh, attains a higher flame temperature as compared to the nitrogen so therefore the burning velocity will be much higher right so this argument one can look at it uh, by explaining the experimental data or the observation what we got <coughs> and this is the effect of uh, inert addi additives and depending on that you can utilize it for your application now we will be looking at basically the flame extinction and uh, question arises what do you mean by flame extinction extinction means you will be basically dousing a flame right or dampening a flame or you will make it you know um, extinguish right so uh, and it is having several applications because the flame is a dangerous thing one has to handle it carefully right so the however uh, we will have to contain the flame wherever possible so that it should not affect the life and also the materials so uh, flame extinction is very important in laboratories in the of course the spacecraft uh, safety purposes the safety is very important so also the power plants nuclear power plants right and uh, the coal mines and of course the aircraft safety and your homes like you know nowadays in iit kanpur we are having all the places fire extinguisher because of the safety problem, you know issues and uh, the elevators nowadays elevators are being used very much in the high rising buildings as skyscrapers right and there the uh, fire safety is very important therefore you will be using some flame uh, extinguisher and uh, apart from that several other places will be using but this concept of uh, the safety due to fire hazard is basically started a uh, long time back by Humphrey Davy and when uh, what he did is basically trying to extinguish a flame it is not extinguish a flame it is not allowing the flame to come out of a lamp right in this situation what you will have to do basically flame will be there but it should not go beyond certain limit what i will have to do i will have to basically uh, use that will not allow the flame to pass through the narrow passages which we will be discussing about that like uh, what are the size of the narrow passages through which the flame will not propagate although the uh, fuel and oxidizers uh, within the flammability limits available that means fuel oxidizer mixtures within the flammability limits are available but flame won't go that is the idea uh, so this idea was basically employed long time back 
uh, for the mind safety and uh, by the Sar Humphrey Devi and he has developed a safety lamp and keep in mind there is a controversy actually uh, this person is a very uh, scientist is a one of the scientists and there is another person who is not a uh, scientist was a uneducated person but he made that lamp previously before the Humphrey Devi. But uh, of course, uh, he lost the battle and then people know that he is the person and uh, I really do not know what is the truth, <laughs> right, whether that fellow did or this fellow did. But anyway, he could not explain to the Royal Society at that time how it is working, right. But he could, this person Devi, Devi uh, could, um, you know, explain. If you look at this is the lamp and uh, this is the, uh, a kind of a, uh, net um, kind of a screen which is available, metal screen like metal screen you can say and uh, that would not allow the flame to propagate although the around this thing will be the fuel air mixture will be there. Particularly in the mines you know there will be some gases uh, due to pyrolysis and other things will be taking place and some oxygen will be there. right? And that mixed and that may, you know, if uh, if you are taking a lamp into the, uh, of course, at that time, if you take a lamp that was, uh, which is um, uh, burnt, uh, you know, which is uh, basically made out of a kind of a <coughs> weak flame or the flame, flame device or the combustion device, the naturally what will happen, it will spread the fire. So, uh, that is a very uh, important, uh, you know, breakthrough what happened and then it is being done and this is the screen which will help. And we, if you uh, remember that we basically use uh, this kind of a screen, metal screen uh, particularly to stabilize the one dimensional flame I had discussed earlier, right. <coughs> and uh, the flame extinction is uh, very uh, important, but question arises how we can do. There are two ways it can be done. One is of course, the thermal effect, uh, because we know the flame is uh, self propagated because of fact that heat being transferred to the uh, preheated zone and then preheated zone will be attaining the self ignition temperature as a result the combustion will be self sustained, right. So, if you reduce the heat if you allow the some heat transfer to take place that means you know heat loss will be much higher as compared to the whatever the um, uh, the heat being released then flame will be extinguishing that is one way and another way is of course you can add uh, see this, this thermal effect is basically you can look at some water you can take some water addition and then what will happen the CP of the water is very high, so that it will be taking out the heat whatever being liberated. So, that is the way it will be flame will be uh, can be extinguished and the, that is a which is a common way of doing it. Beside this uh, there is a chemical reaction which is going on right and that can be uh, the chemical kinetics uh, uh, during the chemical reactions you know uh, can be altered by adding some halogen, some other constituents which will be uh, you know uh, affecting the kinetics of the chemical reaction. So, by these two ways one can think of uh, basically using uh, extinguishing a flame. So, you might be knowing that like uh, wherever there is a flame uh, we use also nitrogen gas right that is basically it will be acting as a diluent or uh, the thermal effect and whereas some halogen some other constituents you know you can use and uh, uh, this is the flame extinction there will be also flame enhancement which is just opposite right that means the it will whether and you will have minimize the heat losses from the flame right that is the one way and another way that you add some additives which will be help in enhancing the chemical reactions right so, uh, that is just uh, if you look at one is uh, positive aspect by enhancing the combustion rate like we do use some additives like metal powders and other things are being used in your liquid uh, propellants or the liquid fuel to enhance the reactivity of the propellants. So, similarly in solid propellants and other places people do use it. <coughs> and now coming uh, this thing we need to understand the flame quenching. 
so as the name indicates quenching means what like uh, basically it is the dousing a flame or dampening it right and uh, how we can quench the flame is a very important question we need to ask for that we need to understand what is happening inside the flame uh, for we know that the for a flame to propagate right certain energy being released due to the chemical reaction and that maintains a high temperature in other words this heat transfer heat release during the chemical reaction will be transferred to the preheat zone and then the uh, fuel layer mixture will be uh, basically uh, enhance and uh, reach the auto ignition temperature such that the combustion will be taking place and if uh, heat loss can be increased by decreasing the passage way right because if uh, in a tube let us say there is a tube here right and there is a flame which is moving right and then this is the wall right and this is your tube fuel and air mixture it can be oxidizer also right it can be oxygen so uh, this losses heat will be lost to this right something heat loss if this can be enhanced right then what will happen the reaction rate will be reduced because the heat release you know whatever it is being uh, uh, generated heat being released during the chemical reaction of fuel emission will be so heat will be released uh, reduced because of heat transfer through the wall right heat loss i can say <coughs> so uh, as a result uh, like uh, there will be resulting low reaction rate right and if it will be uh, says that that it would not be self sustained then naturally there will be flame extinction in other words the energy release rate reduces due to the drop in the temperature right when the temperature drops below the self ignition temperature right then there would not be any heat release right and that leads to the flame quenching that means if you look at if we summarize basically what is happening if you uh, enhance the heat loss from the flame to its surrounding like such that uh, the the temperature will be below the self ignition temperature so that it won't be self uh, it won't be uh, self sustained because combustion means what even though you are taking out the ignition energy source still combustion is going on ignition is just mean to initiate the combustion after that it will be self sustained right so therefore uh, the heat loss plays a very important role for quenching the flame right <coughs> question is how we will conduct this uh, experiment to find out quenching for that we uh, what we do we'll define a uh, definition that is a quenching diameter or the distance and that will dictate whether the flame will be quenched when it will pass through that uh, for, for that uh, we'll have to conduct experiment what we will do we'll take a tube right of diameter something let's say uh, d right some diameter and this is fuel plus oxidizer mixture and there is a some kind of a flame is established right what you will do you will now suddenly close this valve that means you stop so if you stop this valve flow right which is going through this what will happen the flame will trying to travel inside this tube this is a tube right so it will be coming inside or not flame will be moving inside with certain velocity so when it will move inside then you know it will see this wall like flame may be somewhere here right it may be flame will be here as a result that if heat losses will be there right there will be some heat loss 
and these losses will make the uh, reduce the laminar burning velocity. If it is a coming towards 0, right, then what will happen? Flame will extinguish, right. What I will do? I will take this diameter and see that flame is coming in and this of course, when the flame enters into the tube, we call it as a flashback, right. This process is known as flashback. And uh, let us say D you have taken let us say 10 mm right for a uh, methane air mixture right at phi is equal to 1. Of course, the initial temperature 298 Kelvin pressure is 1 atmosphere pressure you know we are conducting experiment. Then what I will do I will take a small tube like let us say I will reduce into 5 the D is 5 mm right and again I will conduct this experiment right that is uh, fuel plus oxidizer and phi is equal to 1 right I can say right air will better right. Then again flame is coming and then it is propagating right with a certain velocity S L. So, it is passing through it that means it is not quench right it is not quench. Now, if I reduce to let us say it is something D is equal to 2 mm right flame is established here, but however, when this fuel and uh, air phi is equal to 1 is stopped, then flame is entering here, but it may be moving to some extent, but the S L is uh, coming towards 0 after that it would not move you know flame is extinction. That diameter at which flame would propagate right inside the tube metal tube. Uh, where the heat transfer will be taking place, why I am insisting on metal because heat transfer will taking place, then uh, it would not propagate, it cannot propagate that diameter we call critical diameter or the quenching diameter. That means, the quenching diameter is the critical diameter of a circular tube below which a flame cannot propagate, right. And similarly, I can conduct this experiment in a two dimensional burner, right. For example, if I take this is a tube, right, a tube means it is a something like this tube, right, and the two dimensional means it will be like a burner like this tube, like that, right, where the fuel and air mixtures, right. So, this is basically 2 D flame, this is basically 2 dimensional flame and similarly we can uh, define a quenching distance right for a 2 dimensional flame. This is a 2 dimensional uh, burner, are you getting the circular and the 2 dimensional right flame will be uh, like this, these are the basically flame surface. So, uh, and let us look at the quenching data for various stoichiometric fuel layer mixtures. If you uh, look at that the methane air where the S L is around 40 centimeter, the quenching diameter is 2.5 mm and of course, when it is replaced by uh, air is replaced by oxygen, it became very small. Why? Because the burning velocity is uh, very high. And similarly, for a propane air, this is 2.2 because burning velocity is higher, so it is lower than little bit. And if you consider the hydrogen air, right, it is the burning velocity is very, very high 210 and it is a very small value. And if you go to oxygen, it is again reduced further because the burning velocity will be higher. So, uh, with this, uh, we will stop over uh, in the next lecture, we will be. Uh, looking at how this quenching diameter will be related to the uh, burning laminar burning velocity using a very simplified analysis right. So, we will do that in the next lecture.